I want to talk a little bit about something that I realised that's taken me 18 months <laughs> to realise. And I don't understand why it's taken me 18 months to realise. I wouldn't want it to take 18 months for someone else to realise either. Uh, I've just tried to explain it in a message that I've not yet posted to Parapoly Logic. Um, it's about something that I was typing to Captain Grubb about three weeks ago. He asked me a question, you know, pretty much the same as you know, Parapoly and all that. He was just arguing on behalf of Gary. And um, I was trying to explain to him my position. And I confess, I, I get confused myself too, because I'm not trained in any of this. I'm no good at mathematics. I get confused too. But I had a bit of a eureka moment, I suppose you could call it. Suddenly figured out how, how envy and kinetic energy do fit together. And Because up to now, I've always thought the same, really. I mm. think either one or the other would be worthwhile. You can't, I, can't, I couldn't imagine how both of them could be worthwhile. Anyway, I was just typing the message to... Parapoly. And I suddenly thought, oh, we have wrapped up about that thing, that moment of excitement about three weeks ago, the message that I never finished to Captain Grubb. I didn't finish it because there was more to say. He asked, there's a lot of things he said, so it got more complicated, so it never got finished. But anyway, I dug it out, I did a little search and I found it. Um, and I typed, I've explained it to Parapoly. And I thought, the explanation seemed to be not as difficult as I remembered. So I thought, so I thought, well, instead of typing it in a comment that easily gets lost, have a go at making a little, just talk about it on video and see if that helps. I, I, am I making a mistake here? I don't think I am, but anyway, this is how I look at it, right? Now, the thing is, the ironic thing is, this kind of supports Gary, in a sense, and in a strange sense, I'm pleased if it does. So I use this spring to propel. This is what Captain Grubb suggested to me. He said, I use this spring to fix setting. Boing. To propel this one mass, let's call it, ball. Then he said, that'll have a certain momentum. And the, and he, he assumed that when we halve that ball, half mass, use the same spring, that will be shot off with the same momentum. And at first I agreed with him, well, yeah, the spring only has, it can, it can give X amount of joules, say 100, 100 joules, whatever. So it'll give that 100 joules and it'll give that 100 joules. But I had to go back a day later because I realized, no, that's not right, is it? I've already proved that that doesn't happen. Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. I've already proved that that doesn't happen because well, if that went off at 10 mile an hour, this would only go off at 14 mile an hour. It wouldn't go off at 20 mile an hour, as Gary would expect. But there's some good news coming up. It wouldn't go off at 20 mile an hour, double the speed, which would be, it goes off at 14 mile an hour, doesn't it? So, so the mass times velocity, half mass time, the velocity has to go up twice, doesn't it, for MV to be true? Yes. And that's why, obviously I can understand why, it must break Gary's heart for me and anybody else to be saying, but it doesn't do that. I can understand now why he's torn up thinking, this fucking got to because MV. And I understand why. Because yes, it does. Makes sense what Gary's saying does make sense, but it doesn't happen. But the good news is the kinetic energy formula corrects for that, it puts it back to what it should have been in Gary's world, so to speak. So, Gary said, Stay with me, stay with me, folks, don't get upset. In Gary's world, that should have gone, and Captain Grubb's world, that should have gone at twice the velocity of that, yes, and it didn't. It went 1.4 times the velocity of that. And, but that ruins Gary's day because it, it, think, well, the velocity's got to have gone up twice for that to happen. And if it didn't, then some, either some trickery's gone on or some problem with the experiment, you know, some friction or something else. And it's not that. I've realised what it is. Hang on. What I'm basically saying is at 
That adding on 1.4 times faster instead of 2 times faster, the kinetic energy formula multiplies that 1.4 times 1.4. So it makes it go 2 times faster. Artificially, you could say. In numbers only, you could say. But it corrects it back to what it should have been all along. Now, forgive me if I'm stating the obvious to anybody. This might even be stating the obvious to Gary, I don't know. But, but to me, this is a revelation. <laughs> this is a revelation. It's probably stating the obvious to all you know, the minus marbles and John Walkers, etc. But to me, this is a revelation. This makes sense to me now. It's like, ah, so this was always meant to go in the momentum thing twice as fast but it doesn't it goes 1.4 times as fast in practice and so we have to multiply that by itself square it and it brings it back to two times faster it doesn't literally go two times faster but the kinetic energy formula makes it as if it went two times faster i don't know about the half bit forget the half for now i don't know about that i can't solve everything <laughs> my brain wasn't built in the day but that brings it back to what it should have been all along and that's why that has the same jewels as that. Even though the kinetic energy formula gives the impression that it's given false advantage to that. It looks like the kinetic energy formula is giving artificial advantage to that. I suppose it is to bring it back to the jewels it should have been all along. You see, I did a calculation, a uh, 10 mile an hour 5 ton train versus 5 mile an hour, an hour 10 ton train. And I did the calculation. And one came out to 250 joules, say, fictitious numbers. And then I did the calculation further, and that came to 249.999 joules or whatever. Same, in other words. But they've both been pushed off the same spring. I thought, well, so they are equal. In other words, that spring is del delivering the same joules to that, even though it's going faster, and it'll do twice as much work. Oh, we've done that. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Careful, Steve. Careful. Careful, careful, careful. Ah, I suppose this is the point of contention, isn't it? The fact that we are claiming that if that has 250 joules at half the speed of that, and that has 250 joules too, delivered by the same spring, if that has 250 joules too, how come, how come I'm measuring it compressing a spring more sometimes? How come I am measuring it compressing a spring more? if it's got the same energy as that. Now that's a difficult point, isn't it? So I've got to think again now. How was that compressing the spring more? My experiment where I use a lever to send that off at one speed and that off at twice the speed, they're both going up at the same time, off the same lever. And that one, when I made that strike pendulums, it did put more energy into the pendulum. It swung higher. I don't know where I went wrong in my calculation, so I've got to check because I've realised I, realize I must have fucked up because what I've said doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit with what we've already learnt before. So let me check again. This is going to be slow and painful. But five ton train, five TT, okay. Five ton train, and we have a ten ton train. 5 ton train, 10 ton train, 10 mph, and that 5 mph, by momentum rules, that is simply 5 times 10 is 50, 10 times 5 is 50, that's momentum rules, isn't it? Draw a line on that minute. Right. So in green ink, we'll do the connect candy formula. So half um v squared put the numbers in so it's half what's the math five tons ten tons velocity of ten mile an hour and ten mile an hour five mile an hour uh, but it's squared so so it's ten times ten five times five Again, that's half five times one hundred, ten times ten. This is half ten. Ten times five times five is twenty-five. 
So that equals half of 5 times 100 is 500. And half, 10 times 25 is 250. So it's half times 250, isn't it? That equals 125. So that's 125. And this, half of 500, is 250. According to the kinetic energy formula, this gives twice the energy of that. I don't know why I'm disappointed, because I, I should have known that all along. I've done it how many times I've done it. But if, if I don't do it regular, I'm going to forget it. But the next thing now we have to deal with, ah, might be coming back to me. That's double the joules. Faster speed, double speed, 10 mile an hour. But it took more joules to make that happen. It's a different case than I was on about with that. To make that happen, to get double the energy, if we were halving the mass, then we had to double the spring. We needed two of these to make that happen. So let's go to this other case. Okay, so let's look at this example now where we have one spring doing both operations. Okay, let's say it's doing 100 joules, just for argument's sake. Half mass and a full mass. Big round, okay. Big, little. Same spring pushing them, okay. But let's say it pushes this one, the full mass, equivalent to the 10 ton train. Let's say it pushes that at five miles an hour. Forget the 100 years now. So the full mass pushes it at five miles an hour. Gary would expect this, if the rules were MV, Gary would expect this that to push it that at 10 miles an hour. I'll put that in the square box. So that's what Gary expects, isn't it? that if that does five mile an hour, then that should be doing 10 mile an hour. But in practice, what we find is it's actually doing 7.07, I think it was, MPH. 1.4 times that. It's 1.4 times that. So Gary's expecting that to go 10 mile an hour. It's actually gone 1.4 times that, which is 7.07 7 .07 times, yeah? The square root, no, that's the square root of two. And 1.4 times that is 7.07. I'm going from memory now. It's only going 10 miles an hour, it's gone 1.4 times. It's only going 10 miles an hour, it's gone. Just do the kinetic energy equation. Again, we do the half mass things again, then what we do? Half mv squared, half mv squared. So we put the numbers in now. So here we put. We didn't say, I didn't say what the mass is, but I did, did it. I only did the speed, didn't I? Let's say the masses were the same as before, might as well. 10, doesn't matter what the units are, does it? So, so 10, the mass, times, and the V squared is 5 times 5 again. 10 times 5 times 5 was 20. It's the same as that, isn't it? <laughs> Half of 250 equals 125. That's the sum total of energy in whatever units they are for this. So we call the full mass, I said 10. And the half mass, I'm going to say now 5 ton. So do the same thing either. It's the same bloody thing, Steve, isn't it? No, it's, it can't be though, can it? Because, no, it's not because we have a different speed now, don't we? Let's go to it. So half mass. Yeah, half of what's the mass? Five times the velocity squared, which is 7.07 .07 times 7.07 .07 equals what's seven sevens? I'm no good at maths. Is it 49? It is, isn't it? I think. Yeah, it's as new as damn it's 50, isn't it? Yes, yeah, to call that 50. So we've got half of five times 50. So five times 50 is. 5 times 50, 250, isn't it? 250, but we have it, equals 125. 125 again. So, so this spring, this one spring delivers the same energy to the full mass, ultimately, in joules, as it does to the half mass in joules, yes? 
It's, it's delivering the same energy, 125, 125. That's different from this cage because, yeah, it's different in this cage because we're not saying in this case, yeah, this, this, yeah, the difference is we're not saying in this case that we're using the same energy to get that to happen as that happened. We don't care in this case that it took two twice as much energy to get that to happen as that to happen, do we? See, this took 125 whatever's of energy to get that to get that 10 ton train going at five miles an hour, but it took double that. Two of these springs say to get a train half that size going twice the speed it's taken double to make that happen now have we got a contradiction still according to nv rules is it because according to this nv is the same 50 in each case but nv isn't telling us isn't informing us that it took twice the energy to get that to happen MV gives the impression that it took the same amount of energy to do that. And it didn't, it took twice as much energy to do that. MV is not giving us the correct answer for that, I don't think. Which is why it's not measuring the jewels, is it? My brain goes fuzzy and I stop being able to think straight. But this one where it was the same spring, I'm talking to myself again now. It was the same spring that did both tasks. All we did was halve the mass, and it didn't go twice as fast. It went 1.4 times as fast, but it had the same amount of energy. Yes, so 1.4 times faster half mass is the same amount of energy. But what's the MV situation with this? Because according to MV rules, it's 50 again, isn't it? Because we have the same thing, don't we? How can I write this? I'll do it in a, in a triangle shape. MV, okay. MV. So that's 10 tons times 5 and a half equals 50. And this one, it's triangle. It's MV. 5 tons. Times it's not 10 mile an hour, though, is it? it's now 5 times 7.07. 5 times 7, what's 5 times 7? 35, isn't it? 35. Would Gary have expected, let's say, would Gary expect this one spring, would Captain Grubb expect that this one spring fell in that mass, 10 tons and a half mass? Five tons. You would expect them to have the same MV. Yeah, this is what he's been saying. Right, we're back to where, back to square one now, where Captain Grubb was saying, these would have the same MV, he was saying. Mass times velocity, that would do 50, and this one would do, he said that would do 50 as well. But that's the point of contention. It doesn't, because we know it's only good 1.4 times velocity. So it ends up having 35 units of momentum. This half mass. I've been saying that that gets corrected in the, in the kinetic energy formula because even though it's only got, even though it's not gone uh, twice the speed, which would have been 10 mile an hour, it's only gone 7 mile an hour, say. In the kinetic energy formula, you multiply those together 10 times 7. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so, yeah. So the kinetic energy formula corrects for that discrepancy. Yes. So this is the important one. This is where this is the important one. So the kinetic energy formula corrects for this discrepancy. Gary expected it to be 50 just like that, and it was 35-ish. I'm not doing it exactly. 7.07 .07 squared. No. Perhaps I need to relax now <laughs> and have me dinner at last three in the morning. Five past three in the morning. You're watching a man who's just slow with maths. I'm slow and easily confused. Not just because I'm old, because I've always been confused. I've always found it hard to think straight. It's like grasping at something that keeps slipping out your hands and you can't always see. If you look directly at it, you can't see it. You can only see it at the core of your eye and you grab it like that. That's what it's like trying to 
acquire knowledge and, th and think things through. That's how I find it, anyway. So I need to pause now and think, am I making progress or have I just... I can't remember now because I'm, I'm confused. My head's melted. <laughs> Okay, next morning now. I just want to clarify something. It, I think the mistake that I made towards the end there, I picked up on, but I didn't make a big enough deal about it. I should have pointed out more, more emphatically. And I think it's a mistake that Captain Grubb also makes and Gary. It's e an easy mistake to make because we're encouraged along that way. I keep making the mistake of thinking that NV is measured in joules and it's not as if it's measuring energy it's not is it it's not in the same sense as it's not measuring energy in the same sense as joules you can't measure momentum in joules can you you can only measure it in kilom is it what i have to think about it uh kilograms per meters per second is that it anyway whatever but it's not measured in joules is it so you, you can't do this direct comparison of saying that has 50 50 momentum to use gary's language language uh, and that has 50 momentum and yet they have different kinetic energies it's not a contradiction. It's because they aren't measuring the same thing. <laughs> but it's so easy to keep slipping into that mode of thinking that it's that they're both measurements of energy, just different ways of, you know, this one's the Newton's way of measuring energy, and that's the Emily Du Chatelet way of measuring energy, and getting horns locked as if it. I think we're missing the point if we if we get dragged down that silly you know, horns locked argument. I don't want to get, I, I, while we're in this mode of talking about the mathematics and working out how kinetic energy formula resolves the dilemma that Gary has, I, I, I'm i perfectly happy for this to help Gary. It, uh, uh, you know, um, how can I put it? Um, I don't want to hate on Gary. I want Gary to be happy to be content to realise that, in a way, he's being vindicated. That his instinct of thinking, well, momentum suggests that they should have the same energy. They do, once the kinetic energy formula has done its... I don't, I don't want to say magic. It's tempting to use silly expressions like that. But once it... It corrects for the error that Gary has identified. So he should be happy in my way, of, to my way of thinking, because I didn't spot it. I've not, anyway. <sighs> it is what it is. I, I know Gary isn't going to be happy with it, because it, it, it isn't. I think he'll only be happy. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't suppose he'll be happy, because it, it, a woman was involved in the development of this. You know, and... I can't do anything about that. That's that's not my problem. It is his prejudice or whatever, you know. It's just if that's what it is, I don't. And it certainly seemed that way because because of the manner in which he expressed himself when he started on this on this subject about eighteen months ago. It was December, was it? We're twenty twenty two now, so it's twenty months. So it was it was December twenty twenty, wasn't it? When he was insulting Diana Cowan and that physics physics girl, and there was no need, you know. Why call it silly girly physics and do all that matter stuff, you know what I mean? Saying she doesn't rock and all that, I don't get that. But anyway, forget all that. I don't want it to be about hating on Gary. It's, that's that's all fucking childish nonsense. I don't, I'm not interested in all that really. Just the same as Parapoly Logic says, he's not interested in all that nonsense. And I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 while we're making progress, or at least I feel like I'm making progress by, uh, untangling this knotty ball of string that's all i'm interested in untangling it for anybody else out there who's also thinking if this answer if this helps anybody else out there that's that's my hope i, I couldn't get two shits about gary going saying stupid things about me and whatever and, and and put those things aside for now because it is more important that we all have an understanding of why so many intelligent people down the years have stuck steadfast to this kinetic energy thing and the MV thing. I've struggled, just like Gary has struggled, to figure how they mesh together. And uh, I'm not saying I'm through out of the woods yet. 
I'm sure I'm not. Now, there's the other thing I want to deal with, also a bit of a distraction, I think. This is it a lever or is it um, is it a pendulum or is it a balance? And on, on balance, if you'll pardon the pun, I've concluded that it is a pendulum. And I did a demonstration uh, that I'll have to tag onto this video. But to me, it describes, shows why it has to be a pendulum. Logically, you know, you can't really. Anyway my opinion <sighs> and believe it or not it's possible for me to be wrong <laughs> anyway i'll show up and leave it at that don't make another long video